Joining me right now after debating for 15 hours, District 68 State Representative Drew Springer. Welcome back to the show, sir. How are you? I'm doing good, Chad. Uh, it's, it was a long night, early morning, and uh, but uh, glad we've got it done. Well, let me get you just your overall thoughts on the budget. Is there anything that stands out to you that uh, one you're 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 happy with that got through, or two uh, that you're you know you're not thrilled about, but hey, we'll take it, or you're, you're just not thrilled about? You know, I think overall I'm happy with it. Um, you know, we I'm glad to see that we're funding tax dot roads, core function of government, and because the constitutional amendment we passed, that meant we had a whole lot less for other things. And so we had to look for where we're going to make cuts and where we're going to make reductions, and that's a good thing. Um, I was glad that the House budget included an additional $1.5 billion for uh, public schools, Uh, and primarily the reason was is I have a whole bunch of ACETAR schools, schools that were told they were to be held harmless and we've got money, and they won't get as much nearly what they want to get, but they're going to have some and be able to get through. And so I was happy about that. Uh, you had a uh, an amendment, a uh, pro-life amendment, correct, that, uh, that was attached onto the budget? I, I did. It was the very last thing we did all night. We actually had to suspend all rules and have that debate uh, to pull that ahead. And so, in, in, yeah, on a personal basis, or none, that was the biggest event for me for the night, was being able to pass the amendment that defunds Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers around the state from using taxpayer dollars. We've done it in the past with HHSC. The difference was this one says not only can that agency not spend money on them, but no county or city can. And what we found, Chad, is there are cities that are given $1 leases to Planned Parenthood to be able to provide abortions year-round. And we're, we're going to put an end to that. Uh, we're visiting with State Representative Drew Springer. Uh, one of the big, I, I guess, controversies or, or debates between the, the House version of the bill and the Senate version of the bill is tapping into that rainy day fund. Uh, there are members of the House who are for it, who are against it. Uh, ultimately, the budget did tap into the rainy day fund a little bit. Uh, you have some in the Senate who say, no, we don't need to tap into the rainy day fund at all. Uh, tell folks why we should tap into the rainy day fund as the House did. Well, in my opinion, both of us get to the same number. Um, the Senate does a uh, accounting game where, and I say game, it, it, and it's, you know, there's even an argument whether it's constitutional, but look, they're delaying funding the transportation by a couple days, and that's how they save $2.5 billion. The House's version says, look, let's be upfront with the taxpayers, and we're going to use $2.5 billion out of the rainy day fund. At the end of the day, when the 86 legislature takes place, they will have exactly the same amount of money in either of those two scenarios. So, uh, I think we agree on it. I think it's the optics of it. I think the House's is more transparent. The voters understand, hey, times are tough. All we're going to do is make sure we don't grow our savings account during these tough times. We had $10 billion uh, starting the 85th. We'll have almost $10 billion when we start the 86th. I think most people can understand that. And that's sort of why I like the House's version. Do you think a message was sent yesterday, one of the amendments uh – on, on on the budget yesterday dealing with vouchers. Do you think a message was sent to the Senate uh, and maybe to, to, to all Texans uh, that as of right now, uh, school choice, vouchers, education, savings accounts, whatever you want to call them, uh, are not going to fly in the Texas House this year? I think that I think that message is pretty clear, and especially on the language that we've seen on bills. You know, I, I've supported school choice uh, measures, but I've told people, that to do it, you cannot penalize the 98% of the kids that are going to be left in public schools. And every bill that's ever been proposed to this point does just that. And and, and that's why guys like myself, John Fruman, and Dustin Burroughs, we're saying, look, we are not going to let that happen to the kids left behind. If we want to step up and put a whole lot more money into schools to where we can have uh, private options, you know, I'll definitely look at it, but but nobody wants to spend that kind of money. And so with that, with that 
you know, I think it's, hey, we're, we're not going to harm the, you know, the vast majority of kids that are left behind. Let me, let me ask you about that. What, in your mind, in your opinion, when you look at a, a school choice bill, what does it need to look like that won't, as you've said, that won't hurt kids who are left in the public school system? What does that bill look like then? Well, and, and I've got to say, and I'm, I'm obviously probably the most unique representative with 22 counties, 72 school districts, all of them small. And I always use Throckmorton as an example. They've got about 14 kids in each grade, and they're about 40 miles from Graham. And so we pass a school choice deal, and one kid out of every grade decides they want to go over to Graham. And God bless them for making that choice. But there's 13 kids now left in every class in Throckmorton. How much cheaper is it to educate them? And the answer is zero. It's a fixed-cost school. And that's the way so many of our rural schools are. Now, it's not a whole lot of money to be able to make sure that those kids aren't harmed by that. But nobody in the Senate side, especially in Harris County, wants to accept that analogy and be able to address it. And I, and, and I think that's why the Senate, at the end of the day, when they passed their bill out, said, hey, we're going to exempt counties under 280000 or whatever number they used was to try to make sure that they do no harm. Does that fly uh, in that regard? Does that fly in your mind? You know, I have not. I have not. To be honest, we've been so busy on our side. I have not looked at what the Senate actually passed. I'd really studied what the Senate had really proposed beforehand, and that's where a lot of my objections were at in regards to that. Now that being said, we took a vote of no. Um, but general law usurps the budget, and if they could put if they could put a budget to, or a uh, a school choice package together and could pass the House, uh, it would override what we voted on the on the budget amendment. And once again, we've got to get back to that point that says it will do no harm. I think um, Representative Simmons out of Louisville has a unique look at it that says, hey, maybe we just need to look at uh, special needs kids and let's start there with a program that gives those families an option. You know, that one I think has a lot of people saying, let's look at it. He asked the questions last night. And it, that could it be passed based on that vote? And the answer is yes. And so it's it's not completely dead this session, but it obviously has a huge high threshold to cross in the in the in the house. Sure, uh, we're visiting with Representative uh, Drew Springer, uh, District sixty eight uh, state rep. Okay, I've got to ask you. There was a moment last night uh, between you and uh, Representative Jonathan Stickland where he wanted to uh, defund the program for abatement of feral hogs. Uh, you came back and attached an amendment to Stickland's proposal that would cut the same amount of funding to uh, to the to uh, the Texas Department of Transportation, but only for roads and highways in Stickland's hometown of Bedford. Uh, he, uh, y'all aren't seeing eye to eye, or at least you didn't see eye to eye last night. What what went down uh, last night on the floor of the House? No, and 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 we'd had a couple other amendments earlier in the night. We had a handful of ones that we're going to continue on, where urban. Suburban representatives were attacking rural Texas and the things that we need to do to make our, you know, make our lives as good as possible in rural Texas. And I got to the point where I'd asked him, I talked to him about the program, I asked him to pull the amendment down respectfully, uh, and he wanted to have the amendment up there because there were cert- certain groups out there that were using it as a scorecard vote to say whether you were a conservative or not. And, uh, you know, he knew he didn't have the votes to pass, but he wanted to put a show on. And, you know, I finally have hit the point where I'm not going to see people attack rural Texas and, and use this as a, as a game on the House floor. And so I sent a loud and meaningful message last night um, that I'm not going to stand for it. We passed it. We defunded his roads. Uh, but then I looked him in the eye and said, okay, I'm going to show you that, you know, I respect your district, and I will pull down the amendment to defund your roads. Um, and 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 that's what that's what we did. And, and I hope the message is sent that says if we're going to look to cut government, you need to look in your own district before you start looking into rural Texas districts. It, it, it seemed like to me that, and I guess I, I guess the, some of the group calls themselves the Texas House Freedom Caucus or or whatever. But uh, it seems as though there were a lot of show amendments yesterday. Would you say well, that? And, oh, a- absolutely. And in in a lo- most of their show amendments, um, were trying to defund Texas Department of Agriculture, uh, Texas wine industry. And I know in Lubbock and in my in, in closer to my hometown, wine is a booming industry in the state of Texas. 
come after these programs thinking that, oh, there's only, you know, 15, 20 rural reps. We can roll over them and make it look like a conservative vote. And, and, and I was, you know, I was happy to know that the members had my back that said, you know, we're going to protect all Texans and, and we're not going to stand for this. And so, uh, you know, that, that's what I've said my role is all along is to defend rural Texas. And, and, you know, that's why I fought for it last night. But that being said, I turned right around. And 30 seconds after that vote was done, I looked at two of the Freedom Caucus members and said, I need your help to, to amend my pro-life amendment to fix an error I had. We worked together and we got that done. And I think hopefully reaching out and says, look, let's let that go and let's work for the betterment of the state of Texas going forward. And hopefully that was the, the lasting message that sent. Before I let you go, uh, two more things. One, and I've heard this from a, from a lot of people and, and informally, and, and he may champion this, I don't know, but is, is Representative Stickland one of the most hated members uh, in the House? I mean, I, it almost seems like, you know, he cherishes the controversy. Do you, what do you think about that? I mean, you had members of the of the Republicans and the Democrats walk off the floor at one time when he was speaking. You know, I mean, I, I, I hate to say that a whole bunch of people hate any member. Um, I, I think a lot of people don't like the tactics that are done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to be passionate about the things we want to debate, and, and nobody wants to take that away from anybody. Uh, but, you know, it, it's at the end of the day. You know, you want, you've, 150 of us have to work together to see the state of Texas go forward. And I think we do better when we do that with, you know, uh, camaraderie slash uh, we can disagree on this, but let's keep things moving forward. And, and, I, and I think ho- hopefully when we all reflect back, we'll say, okay, we need to come back to work a little bit more with each other, not be as much attacked um, as that, but you know, to say, you know, we all hate him, I don't hate Jonathan Stecklin. I mean, I, I, I hope that we can work together for conservative measures, but they've got to be true conservative measures, not ones that just look good on TV bites or, you know, scorecard type of things, but really help move Texas forward. Uh, before I let you go, uh, what will you be working on next week? What do uh, people need to be paying attention to in the House next week? You know, with the budget behind us, the House is really going to start moving on a whole bunch of items. Uh, I've got some tax bills that I'm working on. Uh, I'm trying to help uh, Representative Murphy's taking the lead on our sex, small town sex offender bill. Uh, so I'm trying to help him get that through the House so we can get it over the Senate and get that passed. Uh, and then just working on, uh, you know, just good conservative rural Texas uh, legislation. Representative Springer, as always, appreciate your time, and I'm sure we'll visit again this session. Thanks, Chad. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. That's Representative Drew Springer, District 68. Here on the Chad Hasty Show, News Talk KFYO.